something we can all agree on. Okay, uh, next up, Senator Black. Yes, indeed. And Mr. McMullen, thank you for mentioning one of my home state companies, Dollar General. Uh, you do find them across the country, and I would say they are probably a very worthy competitor to you all. They have found a successful model. Mr. Needler, let me come to you. I think you've probably been listening with uh, great interest to some of the answers to these questions. I recently visited with some independent grocers in Tennessee to walk through a store, see what the problems are, and these food deserts that would exist it is independent grocers that are filling those. And competition is an important part of that. Do you wanna just very quickly, because time is short, weigh in on any comment about how negatively or positively that a merger of this type would affect you all? Look, I think we've, we've been pretty clear on the record that we wanna make sure that there are, there are guardrails in place to make sure that people of our size um, can buy groceries, get access to those groceries um, uh, on a fair and consistent playing field. And if we can ensure that that happens, then we can compete on location, experience, quality, so on and so forth. And service. And service, of course. Mm -hmm. um, you know, th so to the extent that this merger occurs and we're talking about specific markets, very, you know, like LA and these other mm -hmm. areas, it's less uh, impact on your uh, district. But um, I think it's just important that we look at this whole thing and think, uh, do we have a level playing field first? Are the guardrails that are in place being enforced? And how do we make sure that the little guy can fight the fight? We're not asking for a handout. We're not asking for favor. We're not asking for anything to that extent. We just want a, a, a fair shake and the right a opportunity. A level playing field yep. and access to the same pricing in spite of all the supply chains uh, issues that have been in front of these. Mr. McMullen, let me come to you. Uh, I want to go back to something that you said about the $500 million commitment to lower prices. So let's talk about the Kroger customer. And you uh, can use paper coupons or uh, digital coupons. You've talked about personalizing the grocery buying experience to the basket of groceries that that customer buys. Is that correct? Yes. Okay, and the primary reason people shop at Kroger would be lower prices, convenience? What, what, we, what our customers tell us, it's a combination of okay. uh, pricing uh, promotions, okay. uh, fresh product, uh, fresh product that lasts when they get at home, our, our associates. And we, Shelf life, yes. yes when, they, when it gets home, right. um, our associates, and that we call employees associates in terms of the friendliness, how long does it okay. take to check out? All right, um, so you're looking to personalize that. That means you're going to have data collection that you're going to be focused on, correct? Correct, we do. Okay, and then how do you hold that data? Uh, we hold it internally within the company. We never share individual household data outside of the company. Somebody can get- You don't share it with vendors? Uh, not on an individual basis. No, that's not what I asked. Do you share um, that do data an, an collectively? On an anonymous okay, basis. Okay, that is sharing that data. Uh, a customer can get the values uh, from a discount standpoint without giving any personal data. They can get it- Okay, they, when you put your grocery order in, and then it comes up, uh, you know, two for four dollars or two for five dollars when you're looking at different items. That is per pretty personalized, and that is your goal. So let's be consistent. You're using the retail markets network, and you're collecting this data. You're holding this data. You are saying you anonymize the data, but we all know that is specific to an IP address. So we'll put that in the record for consistency on this. Now let me ask you this, out of that $500 million commitment that you've made to lower prices, is that going to be used to offset the cost of paper and digital uh, coupons? Is it going to be part of your consideration of paying for the data in order to collect and hold and monetize that data, which is what Kroger does with that? Well, the, the $500 million is a commitment uh, for reduced uh, pricing to the Albertsons I'm customer. I'm trying to get you, and you can submit this to me in writing, 
what is the manner in which you are going to compensate the consumer for those lower prices? Is it going to be across the board? Is it going to be specific to that customer in that personalized shopping experience? And what kind of guarantee are you giving them on that data being uh, held without that data being shared to vendors? And so I'm out of time, so we'll let you uh, submit that to me for the record. And uh, I have one other question on the ESG, but I will uh, submit that as a written request. Okay, thank you, Senator. Thank you.